Steppers episode 2 is finally here. Sorry it took so long. I ended up with a lot of stuff in between that I hadn't really planned. But anyway, let's go. Last time we looked at the mechanical aspect of stepper motors, including what makes them tick. This time maybe a bit less ticking and we're going to look at how they are driven and how they're powered. Let's talk first about voltage versus current though. If you wondered why stepper motors always seem to be rated at really low voltages, then this is my attempt at explaining it. But before we begin, let me take a moment to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay can manufacture your PCBs for prototyping or small scale runs, which is a huge game changer for us hobbyists. But they don't just do normal PCBs, they also do, among other things, flexible ones and coloured ones, which I'm totally going to check out soon. And they also do 3D printing. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you already have a 3D printer, but you might not have one that prints nylon or some of these materials I see here. Or maybe, like me, you don't want to do resin printing. I still haven't got room for resin, so I'm totally going to try a resin print order at some point myself. Anyway, I digress. I suggest you follow the link down below in the description and check out what PCB Way can do. Now back to the video. Normally, I guess with most electrical components, voltage is the de facto metric we use to specify the parameters that the component works with. We're kind of used to it with mains devices, phones, everything really. Take this resistor for example, and don't try this at home. It's not a big resistor, so it can't resist much against the voltage applied by the power supply. If I put in 10 volts and I don't restrict the current, then the resistor can't really either. I mean, technically it can, and it is attempting to resist the current, but it's futile. Resistance is futile. Get it? Never mind. We can work out in fact, using Ohm's law, a 10 ohm resistor with a voltage drop either side of 10 volts, V equals IR is Ohm's law, rearrange and you can find the current it will let through is 1 amp. To use that other equation, P equals IV, we can find that this is 10 watts, which is a bit much for this quarter watt resistor. And of course it fails spectacularly and breaks down and you get more than 1 amp as you can see. This is no doubt why it's looking a little unhappy. If I put 1 volt through though, uh, that's fine because 1 volt means 0.1 amps or close enough resistor tolerances. That obviously means 0.1 watts, which is under the quarter watt the resistor is rated to, so it will work. So we have this motor, it is rated for 4.83 volts. I mean, I think it is. Most of the time these things just have no spec sheets, so we'll just say its spec sheet says 4.83 volts and we'll say arbitrarily 0.48 amps per phase not that I've hooked it up already and figured that out the reason they spec it like that isn't actually because that's what you're supposed to power it with it's complicated but in other ways it's not complicated it's essentially because the coil inside has a resistance of around 10 ohms we're doing a lot of rounding here by the way so 10 ohms means that if you connect a 4.83 volt power supply to the motor on one of the coils it acts like the resistor be before and hopefully won't start to smoke uh, it's got more ability to dissipate the heat I guess but it will land on a workable current of I equals V over R equals 4.83 divided by 10 about 0.485 amps and that's close enough. So hopefully that does explain why stepper motors are spec the way that they are. Okay. So why is it that we can pump 12, 15, or in some cases well over 40 volts into these things and not cause them to break? Let me show you something. This stepper is being driven at a constant current, or to be specific, with a current limit. This is how you do it, but how do you do it? Let's have a look at the waveform. What I'm measuring here is just one coil's voltage on one side. And you can see the voltage waveform, more on that in a minute, but you can zoom in and see all this. What's going on here is that every step signal that's being sent to the motor is actually not just one step signal, it's doing other stuff here too. This looks suspiciously like PWM, if you're familiar with that. It's not quite though, it's actually called chopping. The subject of chopper drivers and how they work is a particularly technical one, but if you imagine at the simplest level, you have a coil of wire that has some ability to retain current over time due to sort of induction, and you have a voltage applied to it until a sense component in series with the coil detects that you hit the rated current, and at that point it chops the voltage, hence the name. The current will then fall back, at which point the chopper circuit will unchop and repeat, and that's how you end up with what looks like pulse width modulation, but it's not a formal duty cycle with a specific width. It's driven by a feedback loop. Um, I believe it's a comparator, but I don't want to go into the specifics of it because this is not um, an electronics video. 
I mean, it kind of is. But anyway, so that, of course, means that voltage almost doesn't matter, or rather, it becomes pretty much impossible within reasonable parameters to kill a motor with voltage if you set the chopper current correctly. It should be noted, though, that you can kill a driver with voltage. And voltage does still matter a bit, though. In fact, it does still matter. But that's for next episode, maybe. Anyway, before we go too far into talking about stuff that I don't understand myself, let's move on to half-stepping, which is another thing that I don't understand. Anyway, I've noticed that a lot of explanations for half-stepping are oversimplified or kind of wrong, because hybrid stepper motors have a lot of stuff going on inside them. So if I do make mistakes here, I'm in good company, so be nice in the comments. So last time I intentionally only explained full stepping, where you reverse the polarity of the alternating coils, and it probably comes as no surprise that there's other modes. With a hybrid stepper like the sort on 3D printers, each coil only has three states that it can be in. Current can flow one way, no current can flow at all, and current can flow the other way. That is all you can do. It's a bit more complicated on the unipolar motors like the 28BY whatever with a centre wire. Since those aren't generally used in 3D printers, we will ignore them. Full step actually isn't even the least steppy step mode available to these stepper motors, by the way. There's actually a mode called wave drive, which none of my equipment is even capable of. Wave drive powers only one coil at a time. The problem with wave drive on hybrid steppers is the lack of torque. So while it's simple, that's why it's almost never used. I hope these graphs make sense. It's the best way to show this. It's kind of a misuse of the y-axis, I guess, which is probably the cause of a lot of confusion, and it's certainly what confused me. Negative on the y-axis would mean applying the opposite polarity on that coil. Uh, the real graph would probably look something like this. It's confusing, so I think that's why most examples just use this notation, but of course that's confusing when you try and look on a scope and you see this. Full step mode looks like this. The difference between wave drive and full step is just that you're energizing two coils at the same time instead of one. Check the wave drive graph when one coil is on, the other is totally off. So that's why full step has more torque. The period of the waveform is still the same though. You still have four positions. So those two modes are still the same resolution. Half step mode though, that doubles the resolution. I think the easiest way to think of half step is that it's full step, but it's got wave mode in between the full steps. So you would charge two coils, and then one, and then the next two, and then so on. And that is as far as we go without something called micro stepping, which is apparently a broad term for anything with a higher resolution than half stepping. So what is micro stepping? I'm glad you asked. I've got no idea. I'll show you while I read about it on Wikipedia. Okay, fine, I'll try and explain. Turns out there's a hack with electromagnets where if you supply half the current, you get less magnetism. If you imagine the full step mode above, but you suddenly start varying the actual current supply to each coil, you can imagine that the permanent magnet spinny bit in the middle could be attracted a bit to one coil and a bit more to the other. And microstepping is kind of unlimited in resolution. In theory, you can microstep 4, 8, 16, 32 or more steps per actual real step. You can go even further. And it's even further still on a Trinamic 3D printer driver. There is a price to pay though for doing that, which is why I said in theory. The price of increasing microstep resolution is not accuracy because you don't lose accuracy, but it is accuracy because you don't necessarily gain accuracy. What I'm saying is that if you try to move the stepper motor to a point that's on, say, 132 resolution, it won't necessarily go there. It will still be a lot closer than it would be if you took the nearest whole step or half step, but it is not necessarily that accurate. And it's also not necessarily stable. Micro step torque gets lower as the resolution gets higher. Luckily, neither of those are a huge problem for 3D printing. Generally speaking, delta and core XY printers aside, the X and Y axes are low torque applications, and the Z axis is significantly geared down with the lead screw to the point that jumping a 1 32nd microstep is very unlikely to show in a print, taking direct aim at magic numbers there. So microstepping for 3D printing has no drawbacks, really. This graph here took a significant effort to show you, actually, so I hope enough of you are still watching. Hijacking the stepper signal isn't hard from a voltage perspective, but to see microstepping in action, you need to see the current. 
I'm too cheap to buy proper test equipment and current probes are really expensive for oscilloscopes. So I first tried to create my own using ferrite cores with windings. You're basically creating a transformer and trying to look at the induced current. Let's not go into that. It sort of didn't work. It sort of did work, actually, but I just didn't have enough resolution. Uh, and I also largely don't know what I'm doing, and the results were too nuanced, so I actually went with plan B, which is another solid do not try this at home. In fact, I actually melted one of the oscilloscope probes, but I knew what I was getting into. I knew what the risks were. Basically, there's a thing called a shunt resistor, which you put in the path of a circuit and you measure the voltage either side of it. If you know what the resistance is of that resistor, then you can work out the current. Ohm's law again. But if all you want to show is a waveform like we do, then we don't even have to care about that. I stuck three 10 ohm resistors together to try and increase the power capacity. I guess you get 0.75 watts that way. And with this homemade shunt, I tried to get the results as quickly as I could before the resistors heated up. Anyway, you put a probe either side and you use the fancy math function on the scope to subtract one waveform from the other, and this gives you a representation of the current. And there's our microstepping waveform, live on a real printer. Cool. One last thing for this episode. I want to show you how simple stepper drivers are to actually drive. More on this later, hopefully, with maybe some UART communication like the proper boards do. Uh, that's going to be really cool. But if you run in what's called legacy mode, you can drive these things with a single signal wire from the Arduino, as well as the 5 volt power line, obviously. Send a pulse wave in, and the TMC2208 I'm using here will use its onboard default values, which is microstepping, which is really cool, to move the stepper. This is about as simple as it gets, so the point I wanted to make is that stepper drivers aren't really something to be confounded by. The Arduino program driving this is literally just a version of the demo blink sketch that Arduino's come with, but it's on pin 2, which is connected to the step pin on the TMC2208. Legend also has it that this is how some boards actually communicate with the stepper drivers in real life. <coughs> Creality. Anyway, that is enough for this episode, I think. Hopefully next episode will be a bit quicker than the last one, uh, although they're getting harder to make, so we'll see. Comment below as always, please, and look in the description for corrections and errors and so on, because I'm sure there'll be some. Remember to subscribe and stuff, especially if you like this kind of thing, because next up or so, I have these new EZ drivers to show you. These ones. Anyway, see you next time.